Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is Code.org, Computer Science Discoveries, and we are taking a look today at Lesson 16, Keyboard Input. Uh, every time we do a new lesson, we learn some new stuff, and that makes us smarter, better, faster, stronger. I Yeah, all those things, right? Let's see if we can predict how the key down block works. Uh, we're not going to write any code on this one. So we're reading the program carefully, making a prediction about what's going to happen when we press the space bar and write it down in the box below, and we're going to be specific about it, just like it asks us to, okay? All right, inside the draw loop, we are drawing a background, and we're making that white. On line 9, text alignment is centered and centered, so I'm imagining whatever's going to show up is going to show up right in the middle of the display area. Make that bigger. And then text size 100, so going to be going to show up kind of big y'all all right text key down space 200 200 so it's going to stay in the middle um so it's kind of like a boolean expression here in a sense let's see so the background will be white the text that shows up on the screen will be centered on X and Y in the display area. And let's see, key down space, tuner, tuner. So, Fonts will be on the screen while the space bar is not pressed, and true will be on the screen when it is pressed. That's my prediction. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. There's false. I'm going to hit my space bar. Okay. I'm the smartest man alive. All right. There we go. Boom. All right. Let's finish and continue. On bubble two now, this program uses the key down block to detect whether a specific key is being pressed down. Do this. Run the code and try pressing the P and H keys. All right, uh, letter P, letter H. All right, so when I hit P, it changes to a pig head. When I hit H, it changes to a hippo head. At least I think that's a hippo head. All right, and what does it want us to do? Look inside the first two conditional statements and see how the code works. All right, so we have our conditional statements here. On line nine, we have if key down H, then sprite.setAnimation to the hippo. And if key down P, sprite set animation to the pig. All right, so that's how that's working. Key down R. And we're adding code to change the sprite to a different animal when the R key is pressed. We'll add a set animation block inside the third if statement. That's this one on line 17. And set the animation to the rabbit. So sprites drawer, set animation of the sprite to the rabbit. Run. All right, so it starts as the giraffe. P for pig, H for hippo, R for rabbit. Got it. All right, and it looks like, yeah, there's a giraffe here, so I want to be able to change it back to the giraffe. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this one, Control-C, and I'm moving my cursor down here, Control-V, Let's do key down uh, G. You just type that in. Sprite, giraffe. Let's make sure they're all working. So P, H, R, G. There we go. I did extra work. Can I get extra credit? All right, finish, continue. Let's go to bubble three. And on bubble three, we're moving sprites. Hot dog. All right, 
You can change your sprite's position based on key presses in the same way you change its animations. Do this. Add a conditional statement to check if the right arrow key has been pressed down. And then, okay. We're going to add a conditional. So control drawer, if statement, right there under this comment block. And then we're gonna add an ins, ins, we're gonna add an if statement inside the draw loop. We did that. Use the key down to detect if the right arrow key has been pressed. So world drawer, that's where our key down code is. And it's asking if the right arrow has been pressed. So we'll select right from the drop down menu. And then we're adding code to move the sprite right if the right arrow is down. Moving the sprite right if the right arrow is down. OK, yeah. Uh, so we need to add the counter pattern inside the if statement. OK, counter pattern. Moving them right, so we need sprite.x. We're going to change that to bug.x. We go to the math drawer. We're going to be adding to x. Sprite drawer again, sprite.x, bug.x plus three, oh, 23, add, we're just adding three, folks. All right, add the counter pattern inside the if statement. we got that. Do you need to change the sprite's x or y property to move right? Yeah, you got to change its x property to make it move right. There he goes. And if I want him to be faster, I can increase this number. So we'll change that to like uh, seven, make him a really fast ladybug. All righty. Uh, and to illustrate that further, let's change the starting position to 50x so it moves it over here. And then, all right, very good. I like that. Learning how to control our sprites. We're moving right along. Bubble four. We've got gears with conditionals. Let's make the gears spin only if the space key is being held down. Add code that will check if the space key is pressed down. So we need to add a conditional here. We're going to go to, oh, we, thanks, code.org. So nice of you. All right, so we're going to add that if statement. Go to our world drawer. We're going to grab key down, change this to space bar. And then we're going to grab all this code because uh, that's the counter pattern on rotation that's making those gears spin. Run it, space, space bar. All right, so as long as I'm holding it down, they're spinning. If I let go, then they stop spinning. All right, so adjust the program so that the gears only rotate when the... Well, yeah, it's all... that's what it's doing, man. Adjust the program so that the gears only rotate when the space key is pressed down. So I'm, I'm assuming that if I did, uh, like, key... I don't even know what it is, like how would it not, right? How would it not? Move the three lines of code that makes the gears rotate with the counter pattern inside the if statement. Yeah, we did that. Okay, we got it, y'all. We did it. We're done. Okay, continue. Bubble five, fish with arrows. If only fish had arrows, right? The tuna could fight back. All right, fish with arrows. The fish are back. Can you make the fish move left only if the left arrow key is pressed down? Maybe. It's a big ask. I mean, I haven't even tried it yet. Come on, teach. If the left arrow key is pressed down. All right, so we're adding an if statement. Oh, my goodness. Oh, is this my... Uh... Yeah, okay, so we're back on that animation again. This is, every time I watch this, it gets creepier and creepier. Okay. So we're adding an if statement inside the draw loop. Let's go all the way down here to the draw loop. All right. Um, okay, so inside the draw loop, control, if, boom, okay. Use the key down to detect if the left arrow is being pressed down. So world drawer, key down, left. And then, OK, adjust the program code to make the fish move only if the left arrow is pressed down. Move the lines of code that use the counter pattern to move the fish across the screen. All right, so we're going to get everybody that's moving left. 
so everybody that's x minus a number, so greenfish, you're going in, you're going in, greenfish. Um, orange fish is going in, and I think there's a blue fish. Uh, yep, he's going in too. So now when I, so they're just wiggling there, terrified of the shark, I guess. If I go, if I hold down left, now they're moving. You can see them back there. Um, and actually, I'm going to move purple fish up here so you can see that better. Run. And now you can see the fish trying to get away. Oh, no, the green one's going to get eaten. He's going to get swallowed up by that eyeball. You can do this, green fish. Make it, make it, make it. <sighs> He's safe. He's safe. Safely off the screen. <laughs> okay. We got it, I think. Is that everything? Move on. We got it. We got it. All right. Finish. Continue. Bubble five. We keep coming back to this, this fish animation that we made. Debug the turtle movement. All right. So let's do that. All right. We've got a debug report. The turtle moves to the left. Everything stops working. They expected it to move left, but everything stops working. Press the how to produce the air. Press the left arrow key. So boom. Nothing. OK, so up, right down and left and then none of the arrow arrow keys work after hitting left there that's a good bug report it's very very good bug report very brief i understand it they did good all right run the program and play with it until you see the bug i saw the bug use clues and find the bug and fix it all right so where's key down left turtle oh i see it immediately so notice uh, on, on all of these, turtle.y, 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 turtle.x, turtle.x, and this one's turtle gets turtle.x. So I need to add a turtle.x right here. We grab that out of the sprite store. So now left, up, right, down, everything's working. We solved it. All right, continue. All right, debug the turtle movement two. All right, let's see if part two is as good as part one. Usually the sequels aren't as good, you know? All right, what I expected to happen, the turtle moves with the arrow keys. Oh, no. Ah! All right, he's just a jiggly guy. All right, the turtle almost stays in the same place and leaves after images. Press the arrow keys to produce the error. Run the program, play with it until you see the bug. We saw the bugs. Use the clues. All right, use our clues. Detective agency. All right, oh, I see it immediately. Look what they did, Dag Nabbit. They put the uh, create sprite set animation and scale inside of the draw loop. I bet it will work now. Yes, he does. Look at him swim. He's so happy and also cross-eyed he's a cross-eyed turtle poor guy but he can swim now so at least he's got that going for him which is nice I'll finish and let's continue i think we're going to be on bubble six next yes bubble six i believe is going to be our assessment bubble so let's make sure we get all of this correct get that 100 kids all right you can use if statements with the key down to make a simple game that moves a sprite around the screen. Yes, we can. We're gonna add four separate if statements that will allow us to move the wing bot uh, in each direction. We're gonna add code to make a move left. We're gonna add code to make a move right. We're gonna add code to make a move up. We're gonna add code to make a move down. All right, you add a beat to that. We've got a, we've got a bop. All right, we've got the rainbow sprite. We've got our, oh, he looks so mad about it. Like, look how mad he is about being able to fly. Come on, man. All right. You just be angry then. You just be mad. Just be mad. All right. Ain't nothing working yet. All right. Let's make this dude move. 
Okay, we're going to add code to make a move left first. So control, let's make this guy move left. World drawer, key down, left. It's going to take a minute, y'all. It's going to take me a minute. Got to move on X for this one. Math drawer, uh, to move left, he's got to subtract sprites. Sprite.x again. And what's his name? Flyer? Dude can fly, and he's mad. What the heck? Run left. There he goes. Maybe he'll be happy and have a happy face once uh, once he can move everywhere he wants to move. I don't know about it. Okay. Let's see. Control drawer again. Let's just do the, all the rest of these in one shot. How about it? Okay. If statement. If statement. Nice and organized. And we're going to go world drawer, key down, key down, key down. Grab everything we need here. And this one's going to be moving to the right. This one's going to be moving up. And this one's going to be moving down. Okay. Next, uh, to the right, you know what? Let's make this easy. I'm going to control C U. I'm going to move you down here. Control V. -ya. And then we're going to hit text or go to text. We're going to make that a plus right here where that minus was. Show box. Let's make sure that's working. Right, left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. All right. Now, if key down up. We got to use Y for this one. So, and we're going to be subtracting on Y. So, nope, nope, nope. Sprite drawer. Yes. Sprite.y. And math drawer, we're subtracting. Sprite.y again. Flyer, flyer, and two. And then we're going to control C that. Control V it right there, and then we're gonna flip that minus to a plus. Highlight it. Shift plus. Show my blocks again. Right there is what it should look like for you. Run up, running down, running left, running right. I don't know why I'm saying running because he's literally obviously flying around. And then if I want to go to diagonals, I can do that also. Let's make them faster. Two is kind of a boring speed. Four. Let's make them go twice as fast. Four and four. Reset run. Now we got some speed, boys. Now we're trucking along. We're going to get our package delivered on time. All right. Finish. Continue. We got it. All right, now we've got, we're going to do A, B, and C. We're going to leave D and E alone. Those are options if you want to do them, if you want to play some music, if you want to make a simple game, you can totally do it. All right, key went down for the click counter. I don't think I've ever done these challenges before. Hmm. Run it. I'm going to get the high score, guys. I'm going to get the high score. All i got to do is hold down the space bar forever. All right. Uh, responding to a single click. This game counts how many times someone has pressed the space bar, but it keeps giving points when the space bar is still pressed, even if it's not a new press. Hmm. The block key went down will only give a point for new presses, so it's a better choice for this program. Oh, is it now? It's a better choice? Really? Okay, do this. Run the program to see how it works. We did that. We're totally a boss at this game. You just sit back, relax, sip on my uh, juice, and go, right? 255. Oh, oh I can get an even better score. Okay. <laughs> we're going to change the code to use the new block. All right, so we're going to take key down space out of here. We're going to grab key went down, and we're going to change that to space. In space. So now when I hold down the space bar, the score isn't going up. I got to, can you hear that? Clack-a-lackin'. All right. 
This is what your keyboarding teacher's classrooms used to sound like when we were on typewriters and we were just like 99 I stopped too soon 100 there we go all right sorry for those of you that had to hear that I apologize all right we're done with that one let's go to changing animation let's make our little guy fly around here all right so we're gonna run it He's just flying around, having a good time. All right. Uh, right now, these conditionals only do one thing. Gosh, one thing. Why can't you do more? So we're going to change the sprite's X or Y position so that our little dude, our little fly guy, flies like this. So he faces the direction that he's flying. All right. A common thing to do in games is to change your character's image depending on which direction they're traveling. You're going to make a bug that always faces the direction it's moving. Okay, let's do it. Make a bug that always faces the direction it's moving using the provided program and images. We're going to duplicate our chosen bug image four times in the animation tab. Uh, oh, wait. Edit each of your images to point in one of the four directions. All right. So let's use. we'll use the fly. We're going to use this duplicate button. Fly, fly, fly. All right, I'm going to change these to fly L. Take the L. All right, uh, we're going to have this guy fly R. Let's make him face R. Am I right? All right, so you just hit that little flip button right there. That gets him to fly right. We're going to make this guy our fly up. And to get him to fly up, we're going to flip him around until he's facing up. And for this guy, he's the fly down. Flew down. Fly down. And we're going to, whoops, control Z. Get that out of there. Flip him down. All right, so we've got our four flies. Fly L, fly R, fly up, and fly down. All right. And inside each of these. So here's fly up. We're going to change the animation of the bug each time. We're going to fly him up. And this is why it's important, kids, to name your animations on the animation tab, something that makes sense. When you're doing this, go and go fly down there. Let's get this out of the way so we can see our code better. Uh, whoop. Whoop. My mouse was bugging, man. My mouse was bugging on the bug, on the, on the, trying to make my bug fly right, but my mouse was bugging out. All right. Let's see. Bug. He's going to be flying to the left. So fly L. And then uh, we're going to choose this last one. Bug is going to be flying R on this one. Fly R. All right. So now I, uh oh. Unable to find an animation named Fly. <gasps> oh no. We'll start with Fly R. That was the problem. We didn't change the animation to anything new. And that's because on the animation tab, when I was changing his names, um, we didn't have a regular Fly in there anymore. So it's like, dude, Fly doesn't exist. And I'm like, yes, it does. And it's like, no, it don't. Flying around, just having a good time, just having a bow. All right. My Mr. Flyman, you're doing a good job. But you might get swatted eventually if you come into my computer lab, where you shouldn't be. You might get the swat. And then you'll really be taking the L. All right. Finish. Finish. We're now working on speed boosting. Speed boost. I need speed boosts in Mario Kart like you wouldn't believe. All right, you'd think I'd be good at that game, but I'm I'm not. I've been playing that game since the early 90s. It's now 2023, so like 30 years of playing that game. 
and uh, I'm not that good at it. I'm just not. I very rarely come in first place. That rubber banding in the code on that game drives me crazy. You get in the lead, somebody gets bullet bill or somebody gets the blue shell, and you just get taken out just because you're in first place, just because I'm winning. <sighs> All right. Since we can put more than just one thing inside an if statement, that means we can also put another if statement. If statement exception. All right. What if we put an if statement with a key down condition inside an if statement with a key down condition? This would cause our program to do something if both keys are pressed. This is called a nested conditional, and it's exactly how we're going to complete this challenge level. All right. So for the first one, we're going to make the sprite get a boost in speed whenever the spacebar is also pressed while moving right. So we have that here. Uh, make the sprite get a boost in speed whenever the spacebar is also pressed. So right now, uh, our little smiley-faced guy is moving right and left at the same speed no matter what. So we're going to make him get a boost in speed whenever the space bar is also pressed. So we're going to go to the control drawer. And the way this works, uh, let's toggle that out of the way so we can talk about this. So if key down right, then it's doing this. But if you nest a conditional, you're saying if key down right and if, it's an and if this is also happening, which is the key down space, then he's going to get a boost. So we're going to copy this. We're going to move our cursor down there with our arrow keys. Control. And then if I leave it at the same speed, he gets that boost, right? So left isn't working, but watch this. Boom. Big boost. If I increase this to like 10, you'll really be able to see that boost, right? So nothing's happening there, but boom, boom. Right, this is what we needed in Mario Kart. Just the, the ability to hold a different button and get the zoomies. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing for left, except we're gonna be subtracting. So control drawer, uh, we're gonna find the key down space again. Where'd you go? Key down code. Put it, oh, dude, bruh, bruh. Key down code space so like i said you're asking both of these questions if key down right then it's going to do this if key down right and key down space then it does that so if i run it and hold down space nothing happens right both of these have to be true before this code will run all right uh so down here let's copy this and then we're going to move that cursor down there control v Show text, change this to a minus here. Show blocks again, run it. And now uh, let's move them all the way over here. Boom. Zoom, zoomy, zoom, zoom, and a zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, I'm holding down spacebar and just moving him back and forth. If I let go of spacebar, now he's going at his normal speed. Now he's zoomy. All right. So now. Get him, give him a boost of speed whenever the space bar is also pressed while moving up. So we've got to go all the way in and build this out completely. So this time, we're going to go world drawer, key down. And this one's up. It's already set for us. Thanks, code.org. All right. And then inside that one, we're moving on Y. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy the emoji. There you go. And then we're doing math. When we're moving up on Y, we're at, oh, no. When we're moving up on Y, we're subtracting from Y. There we go. Sprite store again, sprite.y again, control V, that emoji, and give that a speed of five there. And then I'm going to go to the control drawer, grab another if statement, nest him in there. And we're asking this and question if key down space, we're going to copy this, control C, move that right here, control V, work smarter, not harder, change that, whoop, change that to a 10, 
We set run, so now up and zoom me up. And he's off the screen because we don't have anything for left, or sorry, not left, but down yet. I'm going to copy this whole thing, control C. I'm going to put that right there under the uh, comment block for step four, make, making him boost when he goes down. We're going to change this to down. We're going to change that to nothing. We're going to leave that. And then right here and right here, we're going to change those to pluses. Make this easier on ourselves. There we go. And then we can show blocks again because there's no errors. Run. And now he's moving everywhere. And if we hold down the space bar, he's super zoomy. If we let go of the space bar, he's his regular speed. This guy is so chill. Look at that facial expression. He's just like, yeah, I'm fast. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like Usain Bolt fast. All right. Anything else we need to do here? Oh, show me how to program it? Well, code.org. I just showed the kids how to program it. All right. So we'll finish there. We got it. We'll finish there. And once again, like I was saying earlier, if you want to do this play music challenge or the simple game challenge, you certainly can. I encourage you to do it. It will make you a better programmer. But we are done with the video. I hope you had as much fun as I did doing it, and I'll see you back here for Lesson 17.